Asking the trade unions to vote for less power in the Labour Party is a bit like asking turkeys to vote for Christmas, but that is what Ed Miliband wants and it's what the union bosses look like they're ready to give him. Our political editor has learnt that the reforms promised last July are nearly ready for publication and should be circulated to Labour's National Executive Committee members over the weekend. When Ed Miliband was elected Labour leader, the unions had a third of the vote. We understand the new system will be based on one member, one vote. But how will the change go down in Labour's heartlands? We debate in a moment, but first, Gary Gibbon has been to Sheffield to find out. There is power in the union. The socialist choir rehearses in a church hall in the city that gave birth to some of the earliest trade unions. Down with the sound, workers and now, the party they formed is again rethinking the relationship. Sheffield Council won this area the name the People's Republic of South Yorkshire back in the 1980s. That's when Labour devised the Electoral College for electing its leader, with the trade unions getting a third of the vote. Ed Miliband is about to announce that that will be abolished and replaced with a system of one member, one vote. That is something Tony Blair could barely dream of. So how did we get here? And is Ed Miliband introducing a reform that could shift power from the trade unions and from the left? Alf Mead was first elected to Sheffield Council 42 years ago. Do you think it could have serious consequences for Labour? If it went through the way Ed Miliband proposing at the moment, yes, it could, in my view. But a modified version of what Ed Miliband proposing would probably do more good. But what he's doing goes too far in reducing the union influence. Yes. And Labour could lose its radical edge that way. That's right, yes. You're a parliamentary candidate, you're a supporter of these reforms, a supporter of Ed Miliband. What words of comfort can you give to Labour Party people who are worried that this is going to make the party less radical? Less radical? Um, I think if we have, um, if we are a mass membership party, if we have 200 to 400 members of trade unions joining the party, that's 200 to 400 new people with new voices and new ideas. I don't think that makes us less radical, I think that makes us more radical. Away from here back in London, the final details are being ironed out in private talks between the leadership and the general secretary. Some things don't change. But we know the outline of the package, and in future, a trade unionist who wants a say in the choice of the next Labour Party leader will have to sign up for and pay a small fee for associate membership, membership light of the Labour Party. Those associate members will then be put in a big bucket with all the existing constituency members, and together, under the system of one member, one vote, they'll choose the next Labour leader. But Ed Miliband was elected by the old system of three separate buckets of votes, MPs, constituency members and trade unionists. And David Miliband, his brother, thinks he lost because of the way the trade union leaders ran their bucket. Monstering, as his supporters put it, their members with propaganda for Ed Miliband, not letting anyone else see the contact details. <laughs> They still sound a one o'clock siren in Sheffield to mark the end of workers' lunch. Some Labour Party members here fear their leader rushed in to changing organised Labour's place in the party to head off bad headlines last summer. There is power in the factory, there's power in the land, oh, power in the hand. Some in the party worry the unions will hold back vital cash. And they worry trade unionists won't actually bother to sign up for membership light. I mean, there's something, you know, three, three million plus people involved in trade unions up and down the country, and it's an opportunity to engage with those people and get them on board. But I don't think they will, and this is why, it's so di this is why I find it so disappointing. I don't think they will. Some trade union leaders used to say of Tony Blair he treated them like embarrassing elderly relations. Are we getting to a moment when Tony Blair's dream comes true in getting the embarrassing elderly relation out of the room? Or left in the room and taken for granted and uh, receiving fewer of the rewards or attention that they might have um, otherwise expected. Possibly. These reforms come with loose ends. The unions keep half the votes at conference and big unknowns. 
about future Labour funding. Gary Gibbon, Channel 4 News, Sheffield.